What's going on guys? This is Brain from Advancement Hockey Advising here and today we have a very very special interview that I'm super excited to, to announce to you guys and that is with NHL legend Derek Roy. For those of you who don't know Derek, I'm sure most of you do, but for those of you who don't know him, Derek's really been an NHL legend. He's played on countless teams in the NHL. He's put up great numbers. He's had a great career. Honestly, I think you guys will get a ton of value out of this. I think Derek, he's very well spoken. You'll see as we dive into the interview here, uh, he'll give some really good gold nuggets wisdom here and some really good advice for you guys so hopefully you guys enjoy this if you do if you guys like this kind of content feel free to absolutely smash that like button and if you haven't already consider hitting that subscribe button and notification bell so you never miss another video forward and so you get content like this every week just a quick thing I want to point out before we dive in there was a little bit of a technical glitch with zoom uh, so basically when we're recording we can only see Derek and you can't see me which is probably a good thing you guys want to see him anyways but uh, I just want to give you guys a heads up before we dive in here all right Let's dive right in. All right. So Derek, glad to have you today. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Good to be here. Awesome. Well, why don't we just start with uh, you telling the viewers a little bit about yourself, your hockey career. I'm assuming most of them already know a little bit about you, but why don't you dive into it from uh, your perspective here? I just grew up outside Ottawa, two brothers. So uh, my older brother started playing hockey. He's one year older than me. And then my dad uh, obviously played hockey growing up. And and uh, so seeing them play hockey, it, it just, uh, you know, I wanted to do it as well. So, um, you know, we had, we had some, some real battles, me and my brother, because we were one year of age uh, in between each other. So uh, it didn't matter if it was ball hockey, foot hockey, mini sticks, ice hockey, whatever it was, we battled it out. So, you know, that was, uh, grew, up, grew up outside Ottawa, got drafted to Kitchener, um, moved to Kitchener when I was 16, uh, lived with Billets and did the, the OHL thing and played uh, four years in Kitchener. And then uh, got drafted after my second year to Buffalo and played 11 seasons in the NHL and then played six uh, over in Europe. And, uh, no, I think I played a total of 18 pro seasons. Um, so, uh, you know, it was, it was, it was, it was a long run and it was a good run and, uh, met a lot of good people along the way and had a blast doing it. And, uh, those are memories I'll cherish for the rest of my life. Yeah, it's a lot of hockey there. And uh, it's funny you mentioned, you know, battling out with your brother. It was the same with me with my, I didn't have any brothers, but with my cousins, we always battled it out. And I feel like that, uh, kind of inspired that sense of competitiveness in me anyways, and to, to kind of improve in that. So I'm sure uh, that helped you out a lot too. And can you just like dive into, you know, playing like in Kitchener, like in the OHL versus playing in the AHL or the NHL, sorry, and uh, playing overseas kind of compare, uh, you know, the three and uh, yeah, get your perspective on it. Um, I just know like after my, my first year uh, in junior, I, I knew I belonged. Um, I knew I had a, a good season. Uh, I think I, I had one rookie of the year that year in the OHL. So I knew I had a good season and I knew I belonged. I think uh, before that you're thinking like, oh, do, do I fit in? Am I good enough or whatnot? Because it's such a big step for a 16 year old to make. Yeah. And then uh, once I got there, I felt like I knew I, I belonged uh, in, in the OHL and then I felt com more comfortable as the season went on. And, and I think that's exactly what happens to you when you go pro. When I went to my first pro camp, I was so out of place I and mean, it was almost the opposite. I, I, I was like, I don't know if I belong in this league. I'm not, not quick enough, not fast enough, but it gave me a lot of things to, to go back and work on. Um, and then my second year camp, I made some adjustments and I, um, I stayed all the way to the end of camp, played some ex exhibition games, uh, all that stuff before I got sent. I think it was one of the last cuts and I got sent back to junior. So, you know, those are, those are adjustments you need to make as in your life uh, as a hockey player. And, uh, and then same with going to Europe, you have to adjust the the new ice, the, the bigger ice surface, the uh, the puck control game. Um, you know, it's 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 almost a different style, but obviously great hockey over there, and it's it's a little bit different. And you got to adjust to to playing in different rinks and food and everything. So it was uh it was fun the the whole way, and you get to learn a lot about yourself and learn a lot about different countries. So it was uh, it was a blast. And how, how do you think you went about, you know, getting over uh, that period of adjustment and getting over the feeling of not belonging? What do you think uh, helped you get through that? I think it's just personal internal things that you go through. I think uh, knowing that you're not strong enough and get pushed off the puck, losing face-offs and that your, your shots, your shots a muffin and you're shooting at the goal and he's, he's looking at you like, what was that? And so you're, <laughs> They're like, all right, I need to work on my shot. I need to work on my strength, some speed. I'm a lot of everyone's faster than me out there. I got to work on my speed. So, 
uh, whether it's over the summer or whether it's during the season, you have to uh, keep uh, keep doing that. Awesome. And uh, can you like you play in the Olympics? And uh, I kind of want to know a little bit more about that. I'm sure our viewers would like to to know a bit more about that too. What was that experience like and what was it like playing with uh, those great players world championships a couple of times i remember my first world championships i came off a good season in buffalo and i was a 13th forward showing up to to um to to, to play in, in the world championships and i was just excited to be there and i, I wanted to obviously move into a, a bigger role and, and and play and and uh obviously try to help my team win and and uh no, I, I kind of did that throughout the tournament and uh, I think I scored a hat trick one of the games in the quarterfinal game and, and things like that. So kind of slowly have to, to develop your confidence and, and trust yourself as, as a player. And uh, obviously wearing the, the jersey gives you so much um, you know, inspiration and uh, motivation and uh, excitement that you go out every shift and, and battle. You're playing for your country. So uh, a lot of kids would died to, to wear that jersey and and so i think uh you know i took it to heart and tried to play as hard as i could for the, the two world championships and the olympics and the world juniors and all the all the times that i represented canada yeah it must be it must be amazing uh you know wearing that jersey and uh, representing your country you know it's uh yeah that'd be pretty special for sure so you, you played like obviously in the olympics nhl you've played with some great players who would you say is the the best player you played with and why would you say that is i think i i, I remember playing with marty st louis mm-hmm. and um you know seeing how quick he is and how how he gets the pucks and how he passes the puck i thought he was just uh and i played with him a few times at the world championships and then practiced with him and i just I just was was in awe of how how hard he worked every shift and uh you know he was uh he was one of the movements for us small guys um grow, growing up i think he him and theo Fleury and some of those guys paved the way for for us smaller guys so um you know he definitely was was a really really good player and probably one of the best i've ever played with um just just by every single shift he, he goes out and, and creates something offensively or or does something um, that works hard and creates maybe a penalty or whatnot. So he's always doing something out on the ice. He's always around the puck. And he, uh, it was great to play with him. Yeah. Uh, he was one of my favorite players growing up because I'm, I'm small too. And uh, yeah, a lot of little things I would watch, I would kind of pick up from him. He had such great skill. Like you said, he worked really hard. It's definitely, definitely a great hockey player for sure. And uh, it kind of building off on that. So, you know, I asked you who, who do you think it was the best player that you played with, but who do you think was the best leader that, that you played with and, and why, why is that? I played with uh, Chris Drury in Buffalo and mm-hmm. uh, he was a guy that you know, when he speaks, everyone, everyone listened. Uh, he wasn't a, the rah rah type that would would chant every every shift and try to get the guys going, but when he did speak, uh, it was everyone listened and everyone knew that it was serious. And he would go out and lead by example, whether it was practice or whether it was game. He would uh, he would go out and give it his all 100%. So um, if you're a younger guy looking at that, there's no way you're not giving your all if Chris Drew is going out and blocking shot and putting his body on the line for the team. You're going to go out there and, and do the same thing uh, for the team. So I think. You know, he was a he was a great mentor and a great leader, and uh, you know, I enjoyed playing uh, playing with him in Buffalo. Yeah, for sure. What do you think is more important, leading by example or having a strong voice in the locker room? Um, leading by example, I think uh, mm-hmm. if you if you talk the talk, you, you better come out and walk the walk. I think that's the that's the way I uh, that's the way I view it, and that's the way I always try to play. I think uh, whenever I try to, if ever I said anything in the dressing room, I would I would make sure I try to back it up on the ice. Uh, because uh, you're going to lose a lot of respect if you uh, you talk and then and then don't don't go out on the ice and perform or either even pick up your work at ethic level. And I think those are attributes of a good leader. Is, is if you're going to say something and you go out and do it the next uh, next day or even that day or even in practice, whatever you're doing, um, I think that. Uh, it gets a lot of respect from all the players. Yeah, for sure. I couldn't agree more. So kind of going in a different direction here, what do you think was the highlight of your hockey career? And what do you think was your, your toughest moment? And how did you get through that toughest moment? Highlight would have to be probably the Olympics. I think uh, playing for your country at, at that the highest level um, with all the pressure and everything. And, you know, it was such a privilege for us to, to be out there and, and uh, support the Maple Leaf and, and, and work work towards a goal of winning the, the gold medal obviously we fell short uh so i mean it could have been the two most <laughs> in the same tournament <laughs> both your questions could be um the two most uh 
uh, highlight moment and the uh, the worst moment is losing the, uh, the silver, the um, semifinals, and and not getting a chance at the gold. Uh, that was a tough moment because we had to turn around and and uh, regroup and play the next day. And uh, for you know everyone's dreaming to be ripped out of their hands so close, and then um, having to turn around get a, get a good night's sleep and and play in the afternoon the next day to try to win a medal was, was really tough. But, you know, all the guys kind of like stepped up and, and said, Hey, listen, like, um, if we're going to, if we're going to go out there and, and, uh, and not give an effort out, we're going to regret it for the rest of our lives. So, uh, I'm the one that actually just stepped up and said that. And, uh, um, I think a lot of guys, uh, you know, felt, uh, felt, I, I felt too, I felt, uh, just felt terrible, but I, I knew something had to be said, um, to try to get us to regroup and, um, I think, uh, maybe hopefully that seeped into some guys' heads and, and we came back the next, the next morning, put, put the music on and, and we're stretching and everything. And guys were just, you know, had a little bit of more of a smile on their face as opposed to, you know, the last night. And I think that's, that's huge because it's such a quick turnaround. You got to come out and, and give your best effort. And I think a lot of guys now looking, looking back at that, we're, we're happy that they put their best foot forward and, and we played a great game and, we beat the Czechs, so um, coming out there with a bronze medal is uh, was really tough, but um, was was worth it for sure. Yeah, for sure. How do you like? So how do you just go about dealing with that kind of adversity? What What's your advice to, to players out there going through hard times? Um, through through tough times like like that, or tough times like well, that? I don't think I don't think most players go go and try and get a, a bronze medal for their country, but you know, for players that let's say. You know, they, they they just been on a losing streak or they got cut from a team. How, how do you go about dealing with uh, adversity like that? I just used to get uh, pissed off. That was my that was my thing. Um, you know, whenever whenever we get on a losing streak, I would just get like so, so angry or so mad that I would go out and and play. Uh, I would think like there's no chance for losing this game and I would go out and give everything I possibly had to try to win that game, whether it was scoring or blocking a shot or hitting, hitting a guy or whatever, going to face off, whatever it was. And, um, you know, if people want to follow, they follow. If, if they don't, then they're probably not going to play anyway. So um, I think uh, that was my motto is, is just go out there and, and, and focus on, because what happens when you're on a losing streak, people start focusing on all these different things. Oh, we didn't win because of this. We didn't win because of that. It was a bad bounce for that game rest in call us for this game. But if you just focus on yourself as a player and what you have to do and, and uh, look yourself in the mirror and say, Hey, you know what? I wasn't good enough last game. I'm going to, you know, bring it this game. And then, and then pe- the other players see how hard you're working. Maybe they're going to, maybe they'll follow you. So, um, you know, that was my model. I'm sure that you take care of yourself and, and do the diligence to not be, not lose that hockey game. I thought it, I mean, that was my, that was my thing, but I mean, everyone has their own. No, for sure. For sure. Like for, I, I know for me personally too, uh, going out and hitting someone, like when, when I get pissed off or whatever, and uh, when things just weren't going right, going and hitting someone was like the best way to kind of get yeah. that game and, and get back into it. So I couldn't agree with you more on that one. Um, so kind of going a bit of a different direction here is what, what do you think is like, maybe like your top two or, or three skills that, you know, young players today should, should focus on to develop, to, to potentially make, uh, you know, major junior one day and make uh, pro hockey one day. Uh, yeah. I think the, the three skills, one of the, one of the, the main skills that's, that's not utilized or thought of as much as I think is, is skating um, with your head up and stick handling with your head up, making plays. And, and I think that's such a, such a skill that's, that's underdeveloped. I see a lot of kids stick handling through pylons and under sticks and whatever and doing that, which is good and that develops hand eye and, and, and stick handling. But in the game, you, you have to keep your head up because, you know, what if you stick handle around one guy and then there's another guy coming, you got to be able to make a, make a quick move or pass or shoot or whatever. So I think, uh, you know, stick handling uh, with your head up um, just opens up so many avenues. Also, I think uh, having having in mind your second, your next second play or third option or second or third option, that's not taught as much either because let's say you're rimming the puck to a forward, you should have at least three options, at least two options ahead, maybe three. You know, you're going to chip it, you're going to put it in the middle, or maybe you're going to pull backwards, skate for one step and snap across ice or something like that. So 
you know, I always, I always try to have a few options in my head, even on the power play. Okay. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go here. And then something else will open up because somebody will put their stick in a different situation and it'll open something up. Um, so I think, uh, you know, stick hand with your head up the, the options. You can practice that too. A D going back for the puck. He should have different options. He can't just think of one thing, maybe rim it, uh, maybe reverse it or take the hit and make a play. You know, those are things that, you know, should be taught because in a game, sometimes option one closes, sometimes option two closes, then, then you're already, okay, well, I have my option three ready to go. So um, I think those are two, two things that uh, you should be learned as uh, growing up. Um, and what maybe would be the third one? Um, I mean, defense, I think defensive ability. I know a lot of, a lot of kids love, love offense and, and love to play. And I, I get it. I was one of those. Um, but when, once you turn pro, um, you know, not too many players can just live off on offense. Um, I think the defensive aspect of the game where you should be at certain moments and when you cross the red line coming back towards your net, you should be focusing on not looking at the puck, looking at, okay, where should I be? Uh, where's my man? Where, where, where are the options? What's our system? Things like that. So I think um, defensively, those players, the players that are really good, like Bergeron and, and players like that, they're sticking around for a long, long time. They're obviously really good at offense. Um, you probably look at Bergeron's junior stats. They're probably 100-point seasons. and But he's playing both, right? He's playing defense and offense. So um, the quicker you can learn that, the, the longer you can stay in the NHL. Yeah, for sure. I know a lot of players listening right now are probably like, oh, no, he's saying the defensive game. You know, they don't want to hear it, but it's it's the truth. You know, you have to – you have to be able to, to play defensively if you want to move up the higher levels. Because like you said, not everyone's going to be a, you know, a 50 goal scorer once you move to the pro level. Right. So it's, it's super important. And uh, your other two points too, you know, I think they're great points learning how to stick handle, not only just looking down at the puck, which like you said, a lot of kids do, you know, learning how to stick handle, looking up actually a fun fact that I'm just thinking of right now. I kind of stole this from Alex Kovalev. It's like learning how to stick handle with your, your head up. And then learning how to stick handle with your eyes closed too, that kind of adds like another level. And that, that helped me a ton too. And other people that try it, it helped them as well. So I think that's a great skill too. And I, the, the last one you mentioned, just like anticipating, I think that's, that's huge. And I, I know like a lot of coaches say like, oh, you either have hockey IQ or you don't, but I don't think that's true necessarily. I think you can practice anticipating different plays and everything. I think, you know, some players have it naturally more than others, but I do think that you can practice it for sure. Yeah. You can practice, um, you know, faking, like a lot of times I would, I would look somewhere and I would fake passing, but there was no guy there and somebody would put their stick there. You, you knew the whole time you were going to not going to do that anyways, you were going to pass it to the other guy. You know that, I think that's kind of hockey IQ and power play. That's guys are so good with their sticks that you have to like do fakes. Like, uh, you have to be able to, uh, to, to make adjustments throughout the, throughout the game because you're standing on half while doing the same plays over and over again. you got to be able to be creative and make plays. And, um, you know, I think you know, hockey IQ can be taught. It's not uh, you have it or you don't. Um, I think uh, especially if you start at a young age, you'll definitely – or watch a lot of hockey, you'll definitely see patterns and, and develop hockey IQ for sure. No, for sure. I totally agree. I think as – yeah, like you said, as you watch it, and as you have more and more reps where you practice it, you know, you'll, you'll develop it over time. At least that's my, that's my view on it. But um, so I guess like just to wrap up here, a final question I have for you is, you know, what last piece of advice, you know, that we are like, that we haven't already touched on uh, that you want to give to younger hockey players out there? I would say put the work in. I think a lot of making it is putting the work in, I think throughout um, your life, not just, um, not just when you, when you turn junior or turn pro, I think, you know, if you want to be successful at anything, you got to put work in. And I think early on, uh, it'd be great time, even if you just want to go out and shoot a hundred pucks and, and work on your stick handling on a, on an outdoor rink. I mean, you're only going to get better at, at shooting pucks and, and stick handling. So do the work behind the scenes, uh, that when nobody sees it, that's, if you could do that and, you know, even if you work on your endurance or whatever you're going to do, when it comes time to game, everything's so much easier because everything's so much slower and the game will slow down for you as opposed to not doing the work. And when you get there, everything's so fast that you don't know what's going on. So I think that the more you do work off the ice behind the scenes where nobody sees, the better you're going to look 
when the when the cameras are on and, and things are ready to go and you're not even going to be nervous because you've done it a thousand times or a million times or whatever it is that it's not even going to phase you so i think that's probably my advice is is put the work in behind the scenes and then when when their time comes you'll be ready that's great advice i think to to finish it off i couldn't agree more is is because when you you put the work in behind the scenes if it's uncomfortable you learn and then when it comes time to game time it's it's more second nature right so it uh yeah a great way to finish off well derek thank you so much for your time appreciate it uh you know you gave some awesome answers and i know like a lot of viewers are really going to appreciate the fact that you came on here. So uh, thanks again. And uh, it was a blast. Yeah, I had a great time. Thanks for having me. All right, guys, that is it for the video. As you guys can tell, you know, Derek is very well spoken. He, you know, has a ton of experience. He really is an NHL legend. And I think you guys should really, you know, take every piece of advice that he gave, really take that to heart and implement it in your game and your life as much as you can moving forward because it's really going to serve you guys. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this special guest on our show here. I think, uh, you know, it's going to bring you guys a lot of value and we're going to continue trying to bring these kind of quality guests on our show uh, week by week. So with that being said, if you haven't already consider hitting that subscribe button and notification bell so you never miss another video like this moving forward right and if you haven't already as well absolutely destroy that like button too to help us out for the YouTube algorithm so more people can see uh, our video here and also too throughout the video if you had any questions any comments that you want to share with us anything whatsoever consider dropping a comment down below or sending us an email at info at ahadvising.com and we'll get back to you as soon as possible all right guys that is it for the video Thanks so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed it and we'll catch you on that next one.